Welcome, this is Mel Skinner, and we're back with some more Xenonauts. And I'm just trying to finish up our assault on the alien UFO here. And it's a matter of tracking down the last aliens. Let's see if we can find them. Hopefully they're not too far away. There you are. I have enough to get you. Well, if I do that, it's going to be an all or nothing. I have some cover. I really don't like all or nothing attacks. Uh, I might be able to suppress them. See, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take an E so that we'd be somewhat in cover here, but I'm not able to do that, unfortunately. Uh, not if I want to get the shot off. So we'll try and go for the shot. Oh, there's two of them. Uh-oh. I may have to run away here. This guy might get killed. Um, not a whole lot I can do about it. Because I don't have enough action points. I I thought for sure that it was going to be the last alien. We have actually have two more. Should be able to move over this way. Oh boy. Um, well, hopefully we can survive this. Uh, this turn here. Because I, I don't know what to do. Now, uh, I could have one of my riflemen come up to assist. Although, technically, we have riflemen for opportunity shots. If somebody tries to come through here, we'll have three opportunity shots. I'm not sure the Hunter Scout car is the best choice for that kind of shot shooting. But uh, let's just see how this goes. I don't think this guy's going to live. Okay. Um, rather me surprised, I guess. We lived. Okay, well, we definitely want to get the hell out of Dodge. Um, let's go do that. <laughs> open that door. And open up this. Heal myself. Pose this guy down with a bullet fire. Pose him down with a bullet fire. Okay, so the other one should just be on the other side of this door. Let's have you run over here and help out with the uh, treating the wound thing. Now, if I had another assaulter and I hadn't gotten him hit with that gas, we might have been okay uh, and not had that kind of situation happen. Um, it seems like every time I do an assault, something embarrassingly goes wrong. But uh, that guy didn't manage to die, so it didn't go as wrong as it could have. What is our best action here? Uh, probably we'll have the same number of action points regardless of what I do here. I could get into cover. Or I could just round the corner and blast him. I wonder if I could throw smoke, a stun grenade. I know where he is, so just throw a stun grenade where we we think he is. Um, let's try and get it as accurate as we can. Oh, it doesn't look like I'm, I'm going to be able to get it that accurate. Try and get it where we can cover as much territory then. Okay, it landed where I wanted it. Oh, and we knocked him out. There we go. So I think that was a little bit less risky. I mean, it could have been risky if the grenade hadn't gone in the right spot. We might have knocked our own guy out. Uh, a number of things could have gone wrong there. But we managed to get through without actually getting anybody killed. Uh, as much as somebody went down, that was just a knockout. So it doesn't result in any uh, deaths. So we get a few of our troopers being promoted to captain. That's good. We get a good deal of cash here, so it turned out in the end, but it was definitely uh, a little rough at times, and we were very close to losing uh, Victor there. But, hey, it worked out. Okay. At this point, we don't really have anything else going on, so... I just have our Charlie 2 come back in. 
There's some action going on over here. Unfortunately, we can't do a whole lot about it. Uh, let's take a look at our squad, see how beat up it is. So it was Victor. He's at 57%. We do have people to replace him with, though. So as a matter of fact, Robert here uh, could be a good replacement. As a fact, matter of fact, he's got pretty good strength. Maybe he's better as a shield than Victor would be. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to make that change now. Uh, let's go ahead um, go over to Charlie 2. They should be back. And although Robert's going to probably end up going in Charlie 1 because we did... Who did we lose? We lost a shield, right? Because I had two assaulters and two shields. So I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do that. Uh, let me take a look at our other people here. So this guy is a, a rifleman. Then we have a sniper. So it's up to me whether I want to go with the two shield route or not. I personally think that we're going to go back to just the one shield strategy, uh, even with Charlie one. And that way I'm not going to eat grenades as much when I'm doing the assaults. I think that that helps us in that regard. So I'm going to have, um, I think this guy here add, added into Charlie one to replace the dead person. So let's, do the change I was thinking about doing. So we're going to switch over to Charlie 2 here. Uh, we're going to move to Victor. We're going to remove his armor. Everything else doesn't really matter to me. And then we're going to go in and we're going to change. So Robert is now the new shield. So uh, Victor, where are you? There you are. You're unassigned. And Robert, you are now going to be in Charlie 2. And we're going to get you uh, equipped here fairly soon. So Charlie 2 going to Robert, where are you? We're going to switch your role. You're now going to be a shield. Let's get you some armor. Well, it doesn't really matter right now, but I'm going to equip the armor just to see what all this guy can carry. See, this is a lot better, having the ability to have grenades. Uh, that really cost Victor quite a bit, I think, in that last mission. We didn't have grenades to use. So... Uh, in this case, with a shield, I don't think frag grenades and smoke grenades are as useful to me. Uh, we're trying to kill aliens, so I'm going to go with the flashbangs, I think. There's probably going to come a point where those aren't as effective. Uh, we also want one of these. So uh, he's more or less kitted out. We're going to remove the armor, though, just as, a, you know, we're not ready to send him out anyway. Or we at least have him equipped where we want him to. I can mess around with his grenades and things later. But for now, I think this is going to be our, our shield over in uh, Charlie 2 here. Okay, I think that's everything that we need. Is there anything going on that I need to pay attention to? So we have three more Jackal armor that need to be produced. And then we wouldn't have anything to work on over here at all. So the engineers would be... Um, I believe, though, you can, uh, can you, yeah, you can transfer things from one base to another. We have whole two working on Jackal armor, but what I could do instead is I could cut back their, their goal. I could bring it down to, like, let's say just, you know, the four that they need. So that would just pretty much cancel the project right there. Uh, maybe do five. And then we have the main base to three. I mean, it doesn't matter either way. Either way, I'm going to have down engineers, I'd say. So we'll just let them do what they're doing. Eventually, probably what I'm going to do over in hole two is we're going to have a hunter scout car built because, as we've seen, hunter scout cars are very valuable. Uh, they've done a good job of killing aliens. Uh, they can resist the alien fire. Although, as time goes on, we did see that one civilian had a heavy weapon. That's probably going to be less the case. But still, I value the Hunter Scout car quite a bit because of its scouting potential, and you're not as worried about losing one. You lose money, but you don't lose a very experienced trooper. So, you know, I think that's okay. All right, so let's just go ahead and uh, wait. Okay, and now this is the important thing. I don't know much about these guys, so I want to read this one here. So the Reaper is a six-foot-tall insectoid nightmare. Uh, strong enough to pierce steel and particularly horrific method of reproduction. It is a biological weapon of mass destruction, a monster that spreads death and terror in equal measure. Each reaper is a parasitic creature that re reproduces through implanting larvae inside other living organisms. So these are the things that can, they, they create, uh, 
I think they're called zombies um, or something similar. Uh, these larvae secrete a chemical that disrupts the nervous system of the victim, leaving them scrambling around in a state of damned half-life with while the larvae gestate rapidly inside the body and metabolize it from within. Within a couple of minutes, a fully developed reaper will burst from the remnants of its host, so that's a good to know, and head off in search of fresh victims. So this thing will attack you, turn you into a zombie, and then when the zombie dies, after a short time, another one of these will come out. So that's bad. And I'm imagining that they can do that to civilians. So we could see uh, a wave of these things come after us. So usually there's not that many civilians, but still. Okay, let's continue. In any case, this ability is uh, highly troubling. The unfortunate host is likely to find the process unpleasant and extreme, and it potentially allows these creatures to multiply quickly on the battlefield. Okay. Mostly just says they're pretty good at finding stuff and they're very fast. We kind of already saw their... Well, no, we haven't really seen their speed because it didn't... We blew it up with a grenade. So uh, we haven't really seen how fast it is yet. Um, they're extremely strong. Um, they can generate enough force to penetrate personal armor with the large blades protruding from their shoulders. These blades are actually hollow, containing a muscular tube that houses the larvae and neurotoxic fluid to be injected in the victim once the blades have torn an opening into the flesh. A single attack is all that is required to reduce the victim to a hideous zombie, whatever personal armor they may be wearing. So that is really important. One attack and you're done. So we've been very fortunate so far. I, I got the one with gas. And then this one I blew up with a grenade, so they never got a chance to get close to me. But if one of these sneaks up on me, that could be the end. All right. Uh, despite this, these primal horrors have obvious weaknesses. A lack of ranged weaponry and the relative fragility of their plates leaves them vulnerable of cotton in open or sighted at a distance. They also possess only rudimentary swarm intelligence, making them fearless and difficult to suppress, but in cape... Okay, you can't suppress them. I, I tried doing that with a flashbang. It didn't work, so that's good to know. This is true still of zombified hosts, which apparently uh, simply lumber towards the nearest target and attempt to club them to death with their swollen fists. Okay, so we learned a lot about the Reapers, and uh, that was important for me to know because I didn't know anything about these. I knew about the civilians. I knew about... Uh, Sessian or Sezin. Not exactly sure how you pronounce that. And we also have information on the Corvette, which is the new craft we're seeing. So it has the same speed as a light scout, if I remember correctly. Yes. Obviously it has a lot more hit points. Its turn rate is pretty slow. Let's see what that looks like in comparison to the scouts. So turn rate is 15 degrees per second, 10 degrees per second, 20 degrees per second. So they turn fairly slowly. Uh, anything we need to know about it. As the first genuine alien warship, we have encountered in exchanging the delicate wing surfaces used by the smaller UFOs as sensor amplifiers for sturdier hull construction and more powerful weapons. Okay, the armor plating on this craft is the same stuff as the lighter UFOs, but applied in greater quantities, adding enormous survivability at the cost of greatly increased weight. The large engines mounted in the rear of the vessel are enough to keep it airborne, but... It is slow and ponderous compared to the lighter craft that preceded it, and therefore vulnerable to heavy torpedoes, which we've seen. The power requirements of these engines necess necessitate both a second power core and an improved method of power transmission. The hull electronics are much more advanced than previously, so we have extracted them for further study. That's good. The primary armament of the Corvette is a forward-firing heavy plasma cannon. This has a slower rate of fire, but generates a powerful explosive projectile that is just as deadly when used to bomb ground targets as it is when used uh, against aerial opponents. These projectiles travel relatively slowly, and you may find that our more agile interceptors are able to avoid them with an evasive roll maneuver, but they will inflict heavy damage on anything they hit. Very careful about flying your interceptors into its firing arc. So that was the big cone in front. Now, I don't know what's off to the sides, but that's uh, important. We want to stay out of that. But it's a slower projectile, so I can try and dodge it, maybe. Okay, well, that's... I think I've seen that our fighters have that evasive roll, so I'm going to just have to be mindful of that. But with the Foxtrots, I don't know if they have an evasive roll or not, but in their case, I should be able to just hit them with the torpedoes, which is outside the range, as long as I don't go head-on. I, I, even then, I think we have an range advantage. And we definitely have a turn radius advantage. So I think we can take these out fairly easily. We've seen that so far. But we'll have to see what larger craft is like.
Okay, with that all being said, let's go ahead and advance. Uh, that didn't uh, open up any research or anything. That was just information for us. Very important information. The other thing that's very important is that our... We got enough money, I think, to finish a lot of the projects I was working on, so... Okay, so we have an analysis here. Um, so I'm going to guess that's with our... Our interrogation, I think. All right. Um, additional knowledge should increase the damage they inflict on these enemies by approximating 10. Scans have revealed that their brain tissue of these creatures is usually uh, unusually active, with samples taken during autopsy suggesting that it's extraordinarily rich in energy dense alenium nanoparticles. As we have already established that these creatures communicate via telepathy, this hints at further as yet unknown mental abilities. Finally, we have concluded the analysis by collating all known vulnerabilities in assessing uh, equipment tactics and philosophy into a document for our soldiers. This additional knowledge shouldn't... Okay, good. That's what I was trying to figure out exactly what they're talking about. So we now have a, a buff against uh, the these guys. Okay, good to see. And now we have the civilian analysis as well. Let's just see what we get down there. Okay, the analysis has brought two tangible results. The first is an upgrade to our battlefield medipacks, which I thought I remembered, uh, which borrow from alien nanotechnology to help stabilize battlefield injuries. Sadly, full-blown tissue regeneration would require decades of genetic engineering, so that, you know, we know they have regeneration. These improved medipacks will replace our previous ones and will heal at twice the rate, so that's good. Uh, the second result is a summary of known civilian weaknesses, which should cause your men to inflict approximately 10% more damage when fighting these enemies. So that seems to be the benefit of capturing these alive. So we'll probably get the same thing with the Reaper once we do its autopsy, or I'm not actually, no, that's not true. The analysis, because we captured one alive. Uh, I don't know if we'll get a, a bonus like what we did with the Spillians, uh, but we definitely are going to get a damage bonus, it sounds like. All right. New projects available for research. None. All right. Well, we are going to go to the research screen nonetheless, though, because that means that we have uh, scientists open. So, should we get on the Reaper analysis, or should we work on some of these other things? Let's see what, what they say. An alien thruster that allows extremely precise maneuvers will be extremely useful for designing new dropship technology. So, if we want a new dropship, that's the way we we're going to want to go. We have alien electronics, advanced alien circuitry, recovered from the battlefield, studying that. This may help us develop new vehicles and aircraft. That could be good. Uh, alien heavy plasma, powerful short-range alien assault weapons. Study of its construction may advance our knowledge of energy weapons. And alien assault plasma, short-range short alien plasma weapon. All right, so it looks like, and then we know what the Reaper analysis is. It looks like what we're choosing here is what type of weaponry we want to unlock for ourselves. So better dropships, better vehicles and aircraft, or better weaponry overall. Well, it's starting to get to the point where we probably do want to upgrade our weaponry, as I think you eventually will get to enemies that are resistant. Uh, as a matter of fact, the officers themselves seem like they are uh, seemingly uh, armored. So we probably want to do something to defeat that armor. So I, I think we want to start researching these. I would say the alien assault plasma is probably what we want. That sounds like more normal weapons, uh, unless I'm misunderstanding that. We'll start that project. I'm not going to put all my scientists on it, though. And I think I want to get on this Reaper analysis probably as well. So uh, I'm going to back off some of these scientists. Do as much as we can to get average. Oh, we want the alien officer interrogate. What am I doing? Yeah, okay, we'll just do these. Uh, wow, that takes a lot of scientists. Let's see if we can back this off a little bit. We at least got it up to average. That's good. All right, so we've moved things around a little bit. I think we're just going to keep four projects for now. I do def definitely need to get a lab open in our other base, but we, I just don't think we have the cash for it right now. We're still doing projects and our workshop, although we are getting close to finishing both of them. Uh, and it just I don't think we have enough uh, money. I mean, just looking at it, how much would a lab cost? 
lab costs 100,000. So we'd run out of money fairly quickly here. Now, if we get our projects done and we still have the money left over, I might start working in a lab. We'd want to do that in hole two. I don't think I have the room personnel-wise, though. Uh, we only have enough for 11 more men. I mean, that would be enough to get a start. It's tempting. Uh, I do know for a fact, though, with what funds we have, we would run out of money um, trying to do the lab. So I think we just wait, see if we can shoot down any more uh, enemy UFO. But right now, this is a good point to go ahead and put a cut in the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mel Skinner, signing out.